My father, he was a fisherman. Uh, a couple of my uncles, my grandfather was a skipper. That's why when I grew up, I grew up among among fishing, a fishing family, so it was only natural. When I left school at 15, I went to sea. Uh, a couple of days after I'd left school, in fact. I was like a, a lot more of my age group. Uh, I failed my 11 plus. Um, I did no GCSEs in them days and um, left school without any qualifications. So you immediate, the immediate employer in this part of the, the, the city was the fishing industry. I mean, there were thousands of employed. So you naturally kind of go into that kind of work. Yeah, my uh, father was a fisherman and my elder brother was a fisherman before me. After I started, then my younger brother also joined the fishing industry. And the normal thing uh, at that time, if I was on a half term, would be to go down the dock with my dad when he picked up his, his wages. He was in a ship called the Imperialist for Hellier Brothers. I went down the dock with him. He went upstairs to collect his wages. And by the time he came down, I'd signed on as Decky Lena on the Lorenzo. And I went outside the Lord Nine office and I was stood with all the men, you know, I was only like 15, you know. And what the, the ships runners used to look through the window and go, you know, and then, and uh, call me in and I signed on as Galley Boy, you know. That was that, that shift, you know. So. Just give it a go to begin with. But once I did the trip, I decided then that, uh, I would make it a career and um, aspire to be a skipper. When I started at 15, I didn't think I'd be ever be a skipper, obviously, you know, because our education wasn't that good, you know. Um, but as the years went by and I went Dickie Lena and then spare hand and I, I wanted to go I wanted to get further on and uh, worked and worked to work, went to college, finished that, went as, uh, in one ship I went as uh, spare hand and I went third hand and then went boss and then I went mate in the same ship. And then when I got my skipper's certificate, uh, the skipper says, you're not going to take my ship off me. <laughs> and uh, and uh, unfortunately for him, a few years later after I'd been skipper, I did. <laughs> It was a, an industry where you could work from bottom to top, um, unlike a lot of other uh, careers that you went into, um, where you kind of got maybe two or three steps and then you were stuck there. But I mean, you could start as a cook's assistant, as I did, and you could become a skipper, as I did. And the camaraderie with the crew was also very appealing. I was looked after by everyone on board, including the skipper, was very supportive. I think if you put all your efforts into your work, it's appreciated by everyone, and that's what I tried to do. I wanted to be a part of that team. Could be good money for the deckhands and, and, and the skipper, of course. Um, but they deserved it. Because the work, we were to 18, 18 on and six off. And out of that 18, uh, out of your six off, you had to have a, me a meal half an hour before you went to bed, so that left you f five and a half. Then you had to have your half an hour when you call early to come out and get dressed. So that's how much sleep you got. And when you was heavy fishing, uh, the skipper could say, stop the watches. So you all worked on the deck all the time. Well, they worked hard. It was working away from home, of course, so they had to be mentally tough in that respect. It was physically hard work. The conditions you worked under weren't uh, ideal. So you you were... Um, tough, tough is the right word. Not hard, but tough people. They were a tough breed of people. It was incredibly hard, yeah, yeah. It was incredibly hard. By the time you... By the time you were ready for stopping fishing and going home, you know, you were absolutely beat. You know. That first sleep, proper sleep, after when you started steaming for home, you know, you were, you were dead to the world, really. 
Well, it was an adventure and it was exciting. It was thrilling. Uh, we were, uh, it, it didn't occur to me at the time, but in, in, in uh, later years, you know, we were actually hunters. So yeah, it, it was an exciting job. It had a little bit of adventure about it as well, you know. Um, it was always different. Some, every trip you went away was another adventure. For me, as a, a young man, or a young... Yeah, we, we considered ourselves, ourselves men, so I was a young man working. The conditions were might not be ideal, but it, it, it gave you... It sharpened your mind to, to the job. You knew that the danger was increased, but that made you more focused, sharper. Uh, more keen to do the job properly. I'd been I'd been through the war years as a youngster, so you knew what um, excitement was, if you like. If you like to call the war years excitement, you knew what danger was. So, you know, going to sea for a living, um, although you never never thought that you were in danger, um, it always was exciting because you went different places and quite often you went into different ports. Um, and there was always anticipation how much you was going to catch, how, how bad the weather was going to be, where you were going to go, and how much that you were going to realise at the end of the trip. The danger element didn't enter my mind. We knew it was there, and you had to be conscious of it, otherwise doing the job would have been you would have been reckless rather than safe doing the job. You did it as quickly and as safely as possible within the limits. And I mean, obviously, whenever, whenever there was um, anything disastrous, a uh, ship was lost or people were lost, obviously you thought about it then. But in general, you didn't concern yourself with thinking all the time that oh, this is dangerous, I might get lost, I might get hurt, or anything like that. You went to sea, and that was like you going to work in the morning. You just, you just went to work, and that, and that was it. Um, I mean, during the time I was fishing, you you obviously get in weather conditions and circumstances where it looks dangerous, uh, it is dangerous, and, and yet you come out of it at the end of the day and start again the next trip. At the first, he used to be on the Sardwana trawlers and they was away for three weeks and you'd get sort of three days at home. Sometimes you'd only get two and a half days. One of my brothers wanted to go to sea and mum was the same as granny was. You're not going to sea. Um, and uh, I think they was a bit devastated when I married a fisherman. Dad used to say to me, don't be fetching any fisherman or me, you know, don't be starting a relationship up. It's a hard life and you'll always be on your own and, you know, you'd be mother and father to your children and all that. And I think, in a way, but then I used to say to him, yeah, but you wanted to go to sea. So it sort of couldn't win, really. She didn't want me to marry him because her family was a fishing, went all to sea, didn't they? There was all fishing. And she just knew the fisherman had been drunks for three days. Well, it wasn't like that with him. He, um, he had a few maybe at dinner time, but that was all, wasn't mm. it? When I was courting my wife and that, I used to come home, uh, you know, you, you'd get, get home, uh, say, afternoon time, as we'd get dressed. Always smart fishermen were, always smart. I'd take my wife out for a night out, and then next day I'd say to her, how have you gone? Mum was cut in, you know. Uh, it was, it was, it, we didn't really feel it that much because we was that used to it. But now when I think about it, you know, it's, it, it's, it was no life really, was it? I never thought about it until after I got married. That's when I thought, oh my goodness, I'm going to be on my own. I was getting married, I was happy, I was in love. Everything was... Roses, so that never came. You didn't think like that. You was marrying the man you wanted to marry, start a family. That was it. So it wasn't till afterwards they used to thought, oh God, I'm going to be on my own. 
I'm going to have the kids. What am I going to do? I think it was more difficult for the women than the men. Than the men. You know, I mean, you've got to realise when when the man's away, it's like any job where the the, 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 the husband works away from home. Um, the the the, mother, the woman becomes mother, father. She does everything. You know, um, and and they used to. You know, they 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 were really really strong women in the in the industry because they had to do everything. Because she used to go down the dock then and collect your wages on a Friday. They used to call it the Yesel Road Pram Race. And um, you used to go and collect your wages and you had a little book and they used to sign it and stamp it and put how much you got. And I used to get £12 a week. But the ships could land in debt. So sometimes the men were in debt. They'd maybe not come off the dock with anything and they'd have to pay it out of the next trip's money. So, yeah, and, and when they made a good trip, well, well, it was good. You know, life was good. And uh, and I would think most of the time they did make not a bad trips if you were in a good ship. Looking forward to them coming home, you know. That that was that was the big thing. You know, every day, every day you'd think, oh, another day. We used to have a calendar. We used to mark the days off one by one till it was due home. And then the kids would be saying, oh, another day, another day. And we always went to meet him, more or less, didn't we? Yeah. We, could, we couldn't see him away, but we could go meet him. Mm. And of course, when the kids saw the dad on the ship, you know, and it's, it was just absolutely fantastic. You know, that they, it was lovely. I think we shoved more into three days than what somebody shoved into a month mm. as a family. The three days you spent at home was... was your living time, but uh, you know you 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 got as much living into that three days as you possibly could, and you just hope that the time you did spend together was more rewarding. You you just hope that the rewards were better, and I think they were. But no, it wasn't. I don't think it was tough. I think I've had a pretty happy life. Well, I hope we have. I'm sure we have. I'm sure we have. Yeah. All in all, for the 14 years I did fishing, I enjoyed every moment of it. Even during that time, you know, we had the loss of my brother, so that was a, a dark days. But the actual job, I loved every minute. And I think most people of my era, if uh, ex-fishermen, if you were to say to them, would you do it again? I think most people would say yes. There is, I think there is so much about the industry that will that has gone over the years and will continue to go and will never get recorded, you know. Old man sitting on the quayside, looking out into the ashen coloured sky, wondering where have all the years gone, how fast they passed him by. He remembers a fish dock now filled with rubble, which was once filled with ships. The old lock gate seized up now and redundant, where our trawlers sail through on the way to fishing trips. He remembers the men now they stood on the focus lead as their boats were entering the dock, calling out to workers going to and from the old fish dock. He remembers the weather beaten faces, smiling and waving their goodbyes, not showing the sadness after leaving their loved ones a short time ago with tears in their eyes. He remembers standing there as a boy, looking out, envy wishing one of them was me, unable to wait till he was 15 when he could go to sea. Now here I am stood at the same old key said, yes, that old man is me. Now all that's left is memories, knowing things will never be the same. It's the end of an era, holds all his trade, yes, the fishing game.
Brenda. <laughs>